Hello students. In this class, let's explore camera. So when you open Blender, you can see this icon is called camera, and this is the light. So when you render, always this render through the camera angle. So what we need to do to see through the camera, we need to click this icon, and you can also see the shortcut numpad zero so when you click this now i am seeing through the camera okay and when i use my middle mouse button click and drag now i am outside of the camera now i want to see through the camera as well as i want to navigate from the camera itself so that i can change the camera position one you can manually do this but this is very hard so instead the very easiest way is shortcut n Okay, you just click this N and go for view, and you can see this option: view lock, lock camera to view. Just drag it. See, this is called camera to view. I'll just switch on this option. Now, what will happen? Now, if I scroll, you can see I am navigating through the camera. So now I am able to position. I'm not going outside of the camera now. So I'm now able to. Easily position my geometry. I can even zoom and zoom out. So lower, like whatever the angle I specify, now I can specify through the camera angle itself. You can also go to the camera, and you can also handle all this. Like I want to select this camera property. Okay, and you can see here. I can use this right side transform. Let's hide this one. See here. I am now inside the camera mode. Just select this icon. Now you'll see this, you know, right side. Okay. Let's select this properly. This is still showing the light itself. So I'll switch this to the camera. Okay. It want to show the camera, but it. If it is not showing, no need to worry. You can just go here and select as camera. Now you are seeing the camera transformation. So now I can transform this, and I can position according to the required. So this is the easiest way. There is another one, another easy way to position our camera. Let me show you. So I'll just go back. I'll switch off this camera to view. Now I am back in my perspective viewport. Okay. So the another way is, for example, let's delete this. Let's add a monkey here. And uh, this time, I want to render this monkey in this angle. Okay. And in this position. So what you can do is. You can tell Control Alt and Numpad zero. Okay. You can also go here like View if you don't have the Numpad zero. Okay. You can also go here and tell Control Alt Numpad zero. Same. Align Active Camera to View. Okay. So I'm going to use the shortcut Control Alt Numpad zero. So now you can see here our camera has changed to our perspective view. So likewise. Now I want to uh, render through this angle. So what you can do? Control Alt Numpad zero. See, now I have changed my camera to this way. Now I can take the same render. And while rendering, you can see it is taking lot of time and very big image. You want to scroll, zoom out to see that. That is because of the image size. Okay. So in the right side, you can see this printer icon. It is rendering the image size of HD. I'm going to reduce this like somewhere around. You no, know, you can even type it here, like 50% of the HD size, like half HD size. Okay, or you can also type lower than that, like 30% of the of of the HD size. Now, when you go here and render, it will render a little bit more quicker. Okay, so let's go back to the perspective. So this is the very you know, important of the camera. If you want more uh, related to the camera property, like for example, you want uh, to 
edit the focal length of the camera all those then you can select the camera in the right side you can see there is a camera icon click this camera icon let's see through the camera now you can see we can change the focal length of it but you now keep in between 50 to uh, 35 to 50 uh, because that is the natural you know uh, lens of the human eye but 50 is the standard uh, okay uh, default if you require then you can go add here and you can change the focal length of it you can also switch on the depth of field of it depth of field means the focus area like um, the natural human eye when we uh, focus on any one of the geometry that geometry will be sharp and other thing will be blurry right so if you want that kind of effect then you can go for the depth of field if you want a movement blur okay because any object uh, when it is moving we can find uh, blurriness right so if you want that kind of blur then you need to uh, switch on in the render setting motion blur okay so you can see this camera data property having depth of field even here for the individual camera which we have selected and also the property is also present in the render engine depth of field say there you can give the value of it even if you select the cycles even there also you can find motion blur okay so check this uh, play around this camera and uh, stage your scene according to your requirement so that is the very importance of this the next uh, we'll see how to use uh, lighting the important of lightings so I'll delete this geometry I will add a monkey I'll go for add light and you can see how many types of lights we have point light sunlight spotlight and area light okay so let's add a point light and see how it reacts so I added a point light you can see I added a point light here and we already have a default light I'm going to delete this default light and I'm not seeing any impact on this because this is the you know shaded layout okay it's a solid uh, layout let's change it to this last icon render okay so in this we can see even the impact of the light so in this view when I add a light you can see here what is happening is so I position my light somewhere here okay we talk about more light angle and all let's increase the you know, voltage of this light so let's increase the power now you can see here there is a light icon and power 10 10 watts so let's increase this and let's have this as our camera view now so i'll click on ctrl alt 0 and let's take the render output and in this render you can see we have a gray background and you can also see the gray color on the monkey character also let me show you so i'll just move this somewhere a little bit far Okay, and let's reduce the size so that we can render fast. See here, this environment, the 3D environment is already having a color of gray. This gray color is bouncing on our geometry actually. Okay, so when we add the light, okay, the other side you can see the same gray color is bouncing like real world. In the real world when we have a daytime the daytime light like sky blue or when, when there is a sunset then sunset color will bounce on the geometry you know, in the same way so let's uh, me show you control alt zero let's render it again see we have a gray environment as well as gray color on the geometry so to uh, you know uh, let the light properly I suggest you know change the light the environment color so I'm going to add a 
plain even so that uh, it will be better to show you even the shadows as well so let's this okay and let's position this now you can see even the shadow and this gray color for the environment which you are seeing to change this gray color you need to go for right side you can see there is an icon called word properties click on the word properties and you can see color so this is the color which is bouncing there so if i change this color to some something else color so you can see now and change it let's change it to greenish and if i change my camera angle to this view and if i take the render output so now i think you have understood better the green color environment color is bouncing on even our geometry itself okay so it's very important when you do your uh, you know final rendering output we need to think about the globally illumination means globally coming illumination and we also think about the indirect illumination means indirectly coming light means the bouncing light we tell it as okay so in this uh, let's go to this color and let's change completely to the black so that now we can focus and work on our light okay and then the bouncing light then later on we'll come back and we'll talk about the bouncing of it okay so now i have the light you can also add multiple lights okay you can also add more than one light so for now this light is a point light so what is point light mean the light which emits all over okay from this it's like a bulb okay it's like a bulb light the light is emitting from all its angle that's called point light so in the right side you can get the light property you can increase the power of the light you can increase you can see there are many other values like diffuse pixel and volume of that and there is one more uh, very important called radius so if you increase this radius you can see there is a orange color gizmo here okay this is called radius if you increase this radius it will not increase the power actually okay this increase the softness so anywhere you find this radius okay keep in mind this will increase softness of the light so the more i increase you can see uh, the light is becoming more dim but uh, the softness is increasing a lot so let me show you more clearly like what is happening i'll just position here on the geometry and you can see uh, the shadow here when i decrease this radius see the shadow quality shadow is very sharp and when i increase this radius now see what is happening it is fading the light is fading the light is having more softness and the shadow is becoming more blur and blur i can see something like uh, no blocky thing block blocks like pixels right so this is because of sample value the more you have the sample value it's think like it's like photoshop resolution the more you have a resolution better will be the quality right the same way here we need to increase the sample value then quality will be much better you can see in the right side we are using ev render and you can see your render sampling render is 64 in the viewport it is 16 means in the render it is having more sample value so it will be better than the viewport because viewport is having very less so that we can you know uh, work on the viewport very faster render will take much more time to render so you can just check it here see it's not like how we are seeing in the pixel control alt 0 again so let's show you again see here it is softer than what we are looking in this viewport so if you if it is getting confused for you okay just you know uh, keep both the values same okay so that you will understand like you know what will be the quality of see now it is much more smoother than before understood so if you want you know more uh, smooth Uh, if it is you know something like pixels then it's simple 
go and increase the sampling value okay sampling just think it is like a photoshop resolution you are increasing the resolution to get the better quality output okay so now let's get rid of this perspective let's come back to the perspective view you can also change this you uh, know uh, rendering uh, to other renderings like you can see we have we are having heavy render so it is very fast render and it will give you know a good quality of output okay and if you want a best quality output then suggest is go for cycles okay so why we need to go for cycles for example let's move this camera a little bit away see this output when i switch this to ev ev has more darker area what does that mean the indirect illumination means bouncing is not happening properly so what is that bouncing mean bouncing mean when you stand very closer to a bright wall like for example a like yellow color bright wall or a green color bright wall what will happen the color of the wall will bounce on your body right so that is called bouncing okay but the wall is not a light but still it bounces the color the light theory is like the object will receive the light and whichever color it cannot receive it will bounce back that light okay so likewise you know in the ev the light bounce will not calculate okay in the cycles it calculates better so for example i'll change this planar color let's go here metal preview i'll add a metal for it we already talked about the metal in the previous classes i'll change this little bit of greenish color okay you can see i changed it to green color and let's increase s for scale let's increase more scale okay now see the quality which is showing in the ev render if i change this to cycle now see what is happening now the green color is bouncing on the geometry see the same green color we are seeing on the monkey so here one more uh, you need to uh, see here when i uh, switch between the cycle and to ev or when you pan around see what is happening it is looking like completely pixelated means the sampling it is started to read it is going to increase the sample value to give the better quality output okay so it is reading the sample value to give the better quality output where you can see that reading see my cursor this is the area see it's still reading what is the total sample value by default it is 1024 and it is still reading and once it has got all the see it is done rendering is done so this is what is the output now and still we can see some noise are there here dot 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 noise are there so if you want to get rid of this noise in photoshop what we do uh, opposite of the noise is blur right here we have something called denoising like a smart blur it will affect like photoshop okay you can see here in cycles there is a option called denoise okay when you switch on this denoise now you can see it's completely noisy but still the sample is counting on sample counting is done we can see the better quality without noise and the maximum sample is given as 1024 and we are waiting uh, for a very simple scene to get completed so you should always you know you should not increase the value uh, to the viewport always keep in mind here we have uh, uh, two things here viewport 1024 and renderer is 4000 means in renderer it will be much more you know better quality because the sample value is more right so better you know in the viewport decrease this so let me show you the render quality as well so here even here also is taking much more time and where is our camera so we need to position our camera right so control alt 0 so now we have positioned our camera let's go here and it is 30% it's fine render image so this render quality will be much more better 
than the viewport quality because the sample value is more and in this viewport also you can see still the you know calculation is going on you can see my cursor still the sample calculation is going on once the sample calculation completes then you can save this image now it is completed now you can go here image and save the image in any format which you require like png or jpeg okay so it is much more better and now you can see we are talking about the bones in like indirect illumination the green color is bouncing on the geometry okay if you want more uh, realistic you know uh, calculation then go for the cycles ev also give much better but you know it is very faster than cycles but you want to compromise with the quality okay and uh, denoise as i told always keep this lower like um, 120 something for the viewport so that you know we can work faster no need to wait until it you know calculates and in render add this value according to the requirement don't simply increase the value like 20000 30000 okay it may take that much of time to you know clear the sample so don't simply increase okay play with the low value and see where the you know um, quality you will get and stop with that value number okay and another place you can uh, edit this value uh, to make the cycles works faster is you can see there is something called light paths okay so go inside the light path you can see there is a total value is telling 12 okay so it is going to calculate the total bouncing of 12 this is there in cycle render i am talking about the cycle render okay so it is there in cycle render light paths maximum bounce is happening up to 12 value in the real world environment you cannot tell how many times bounce okay it is like unlimited okay like when the light primary source of light is there then geometry will receive or receive the light it will bounce back to another geometry and that geometry again bounce back to the same geometry or and another geometry with the multiple times you know bouncing will happen but here we need to restrict like how many times otherwise it it will be very cost for rendering time so maximum bounce is 12 so and you can also see like you know where all it want to bounce what is the bounce calculation of diffuse glossiness transmission and all so i suggest you know even this also play with a very less value like for example i will start with the value of 3 okay and uh, let's uh, see the output see here we can see the better in the viewport and you know like uh, when i render we need to wait until it uh, complete the render and but it will be much for fast faster uh, than the previous render because we have we are calculating the bouncing of this color little bit less So, if you want more accurate bouncing, then increase this bouncing value. Otherwise, you know, keep it lower. Before it was 12, or keep it like off of the value, like six, and you know, start working. But I always try with the value of three, and if it is working for me, I will leave it so that you can render it, you know, faster. Because rendering one image doesn't matter, but when you are rendering for the animation, then that time, you know, we calculate the render time, right? like one second 24 images then we need to wait for 24 images to render to get one second of animation output on that time all the rendering is really matter and to talk about much more quality of your render output okay there are very important three things one is material of the geometry second one is lighting which you set up and the third one is rendering quality all these three matters when you take the render output okay so the first one is metal we already talk about the basics of the metal okay and you can go ahead and explore more notes and if you have a question you can drop me we can you know in talk about in individual notes if you require the second one is lighting for now we have added only one light okay so let's talk about the light theory now and let's switch off this cycle so that we can render fast and we can talk about the lighting theory so in this we can see here we have added one light okay in the theory of the light okay 
there are three point of light we need to apply it doesn't matter like all three you want to apply always okay but according to theory we have three point lighting theory the first light is called main light okay and it's called key light the first light is called key light the key light will emit the main light it is the main source of light for the geometry and it will also tell in which angle our story is taking place for example i want to tell the story in this angle then i want to position my you know key light let's split this viewport let's change this control space bar to maximize and change this to rendering and this let's change it to solid okay so now i'll just position this towards front like this so there is some story is happening in this region okay the geometry is also turning and story is also happening in this region so light tells more about the mood of the scene about the story of the scene accordingly you need to keep the light angle okay and light intensity color all those so for now i have kept the light here the right side uh, let's change the light types okay so let's select the light go to the light property you can see point light we have already discussed it emits the light from all its direction okay that is called point light so i'll switch on to the spotlight okay so we can now see uh, there is a spotlight and what all we got in the spotlight one this arrow that is to increase and decrease the spot area or corner area and below this there is a dot that is to change the angle of it like this so that is a use of spotlight okay <clears throat> so if you want uh, something uh, a light which is widely spreading according to the distance okay like a torch light then go for the spotlight the same properties are there okay you can also increase the size of it through the value also so that is a spotlight for now let's change uh, this light to sunlight so that let it be the sunlight as our main key light in the three point lighting theory okay so let's switch on the sunlight you can you can use any light uh, as a main light for now for exploring all this i'm going to switch to sunlight so sunlight is very bright so let's reduce this value i'll just reduce this uh, to somewhere three or even one yes so how the sunlight works here the placement of the light doesn't matter see wherever you keep there is no effect okay like point and spot the placement is also very important but here the placement doesn't matter here the matter is only this angle okay like what is the daytime you can specify using this light angle okay you can make it day night or you no know, kind of specify the light angle okay Let's come back here and let me show you something so just think uh, I have positioned my uh, light source this is the key light this is the main source of light for my character okay and you can see the environment color we already changed it to black okay you can also use the strength value and you can also see here the bones okay so there is no bones because we are not using a uh, cycle render we are using just an ev but even though you use ev or cycle we need to require to understand about the light theory okay so now the area is completely dark i want to add another extra light to uh, show this detail which is completely black so the second light now first light is the main fill light uh, first light is the key light okay now i am going to add another light let's add any light you can add this time i'm going to add an area light okay so that we can cover other subjects even so you can see here when i move my area light so the light is emitting from a rectangle shape that is the importance of the area light so what i will do 
Let's go and switch off this light so that you can see better. Okay, and just turn it off this eye icon so that you can work individually on the light. Okay, so I'll just rotate this. When you are rotating, you can also type nine zero so that you can rotate it. So, and let's scale this so you can also scale. So this is a very very useful light this area light okay this area light can be used as a light which is coming from a door window because from the door and window we uh, get the light in the rectangle shape right so it is better to keep this area light in the place of doors and window so that we will get the light from the entire rectangle shape okay and also this uh, another use of this light uh, is it's a, it's very soft light because it is coming from the entire rectangle shape so very useful for the soft soft bones in purpose okay uh, i think you have seen in you know uh, real world live action shooting they keep something uh, thermocol sheet or a white board or a uh, soft box it's called soft box like uh, it is made up of you know very soft metal and light will be inside so why they use all this to add extra lights to cover up the you know darkness so they want, don't want to show the dark they want to emit the detail in that area so for that purpose so they may you know add some board or thermocol sheet so that the light will bounce uh, to that particular area okay so let's switch back this sunlight now you can see better that we are covering that particular area and we are getting the light source even in this region so let's go for the point see here let's hide even this area so that you can see better so without area and with the area so now we are seeing the detail in that particular region and this is according to the theory is called fill light okay this is for bouncing okay the first light is called key light which is main source of light okay for even for shadow and this is an additional thing which we are creating to fill the area to show up the detail okay so we should not emit more light right so let's decrease the strength of it and uh, select this area now we have selected the area itself let's reduce the strength little bit so i want to show that shadings i should I, I don't want to emit the full strength okay but let's reduce this let the main uh, light come from the key light itself so likewise you can you know uh, play with the key light to make the main uh, light and the uh, another light is fill light even you can change the color of this like and change the color like blue which you can see in the movies and all okay in movies if you properly identify there will be a main light and they will also add some color lights to fill the area uh, with you know like fill light like bluish color or orangish color right and there is one more light uh, they use that is called the third light okay three point light theory key light fill light the another light is called rim light the rim light is for you know differentiating or uh, you know enhancing the subject like product it may be or a character so rim light you know actually we emit the light for the uh, characters or a product boundary we need to highlight the character and we need to differentiate from the background okay so that the character or product can pop up more so it, the rim light generally is also called as backlight okay so let's add a light so i'm going to go your light and um, any light you can add area light for example so i'll just position my area light so now before going to see all this uh, impact of this three point lighting 
I'll just remove this plane. I'll just change the key light to the point light, but let's increase power. Now we can see better. This is the main source of light for our character. You can also see the blue light, which is emitting and giving a very good dramatic kind of look uh, for bouncing purpose. Okay. And the one more we have created that is for the rim purpose. So now let's increase the scale of it. When you are exploring with multiple lights, I always suggest explore one by one. Okay. Like let's switch off this point, the main light. Let's switch off this another bounce light. Now you can see like what you are actually doing. So this is the purpose of you know rim light. Okay. Uh, like you have seen in the horror movies, like the character is standing and the light is emitting from the back. So that is the uh, theory word called uh, rim light or backlight. Okay. So you can see here now our subject uh, having a rim light and we are differentiating from the background and uh, you know, making like a subject to pop up. So you plan like where you want to position this light in this area or in that uh, particular area. Now you can you know switch on and you can see like uh, how you have positioned all your three point lighting one with the rim with the main light. So now you can see uh, the much difference. The main key light is coming from this direction. This is your main key light and without bouncing how it is impacting your scene and what kind of you know dramatic scene you are creating from this. Okay, what kind of story it may tell all those you need to plan by using this three point light theory and if you want you can also add the another light let's switch on this is for filling because we know there is completely dark here but you know if you want according to your storyline switch on even this so likewise you know you need to use uh, this three point lighting theory uh, you can also go with you know more than uh, three lights okay it's not compulsory to use um, only three lights it's not compulsory to use all these three combination at a time so it's all depend upon like i told one example of a horror movie like there will be no point light and uh, even you can turn off the bones light so first i can tell there is some character is standing but who we really don't know later on we are revealing him to by adding uh, little bit of you know bones you can even animate this light value right on and uh, later on we can show up the entire character like that you know you can add you can even add uh, you know uh, i'll just duplicate this and i'll position it here let's turn this angle towards this character somewhere here pointing towards this character let's change this color to something like orange or reddish color something like this so you can see like much more you know dramatic value we are adding uh, with the slides now so likewise you know you can play around with the light you now plan the position of the light according to the storyline okay and tell more story with the light angle okay with three point light theory and uh, with the color of the light so next uh, the another important uh, thing you may uh, require to render is when you go to f2 bar so this is what we are going to render right so when I tell uh, F2 wall and render and when I tell image save okay so when you save this image either even in JPEG you know JPEG when you save it always save as a background color but when you save it in PNG we know PNG can store transparent value so what you want to do if you want to store the transparent value okay this is not going to store the transparent value for now so I'll just take you one demo here. So I'll just save this image. Let's go to my desktop folder and there is that image. You can see here this doesn't have a transparent background. So how to save it in transparent background? 
to save it in transparent background in any render engine okay you want to go for the setting of film okay either it may be av or either it may be cycles okay so in av you can see there is a film go inside the film and switch on the transparent now you can see uh, some chakra map the transparent preview is coming so that you know you will get to know that you are going to render a transparent background so now if you go and render now you are rendering as a transparent background image save okay and also switch on your rgba k is for alpha then when you render this as render let's see the image preview you can see now it is in a transparent background it's completely in a transparent background this is also we saved as a png and this is png rgba both also but this we need to switch on the film so the same thing you will you will get in cycles if you are using cycle rendering okay then come here and there also you can find film inside the property of the film we can find transparent okay so you can switch on transparent to get the transparent background and leaving this uh, there is another one important which i want to tell you uh, that is about we here if you switch on you can see there are three right we talked about ev we talked about cycles there is one more uh, thing called workbench rendering this workbench rendering is mainly uh, to get the quality of gaming engine okay so if you want if you see the game game renders you know uh, when we are playing it renders and it gives the output in live so it cannot calculate like cycle okay so if you want something like a game kind of quality and which renders much more faster than ev then go for the workbench render so when you select the workbench render uh, you can you know give some shading uh, through the mat cap for your character like you can switch on and you can give some shading through the mat cap okay and you'll get the same quality output okay so let's come back to the ev and uh, the another important which you want to know is is called hdra image lighting okay so what is that hdra image lighting for example if you if you are seen your shading and see this monkey character so i'll select this monkey character and click on the new and let's add uh, some uh, reflection some metallic value for this just increase increase this metallic value let's make it uh, smooth shade smooth and decrease this roughness now we can see some shininess specularity as well as reflection on this character okay so and you can also see uh, how it is impacting with the environment but this is not the output which you are going to get that mean if i render let's go back to the shading and f12 if i render see this quality this is totally different than what we are seeing here okay this is because of this environment image which we are seeing here so we can see here uh, we are getting uh, a different quality here because of the image you can go to this option you can see there is a drop down and this is the image which is having the impact on this geometry okay so when you rotate you can see according to the image we can see the geometry means the object is receiving the light okay so if you want this kind of you know uh, quality then we need to uh, add our hdr environment lighting okay so in the real world 
okay we are getting the lighting from the entire environment right it's called global illumination right so there will be lots of geometries surrounding us and we'll be getting different bouncing values from surrounding us right so then we will get a you know uh, perfect uh, you know bouncing like a real world okay, which you can see here we can even change uh, different images which blender is already provided see see this is a different impact it's all from this images okay so in the vfx industry it is very very useful called hdri lighting we always collect you know wherever we need to compose our 3d in the live action we always take a complete turn around of the you know entire 360 degree of the image we also called as panorama right so we take the panorama image collect the 360 degree image and we use the image in the place of lighting so that we'll get that lighting quality the lighting variations and colors uh, reflecting on our geometry and bouncing on our geometry you can see like how it is bouncing on this but what is we are not getting in the output it is only for the preview purpose okay if you are seeing in the shading okay and this is only for the preview purpose we are not going to collect this information okay even you can see the strength of this value you can also in decrease this blur so that you can see better like in which environment you are going to render okay so if you want to get this kind of you know uh, render setting for the final output then we need to switch on the environment texture and add the hdri or 360 degree images so that we will get this kind of quality okay so i'll show you how to do that let me switch on this green see we are getting this green kind of quality this environment quality if i switch on this we can see better like you know this is having a totally different impact on our character so and i tell f12 it's totally different so how to get this to get this let's go to our layout tab okay which you can see here like how we have positioned our geometry okay so switch on this so that you can see everything in your layout tab switch on the render if you're not switched on go to the right side for the properties and uh, we know that we have decreased the color instead of this color just add the texture of environment texture okay make a note so go here add environment texture and when we add environment texture it is showing in a pink color pink color means you know even in the metal if there is no texture connected then it is showing in pink telling no texture okay so we need to add see you can see here new and open so let's open okay i already saved some images here on my desktop which you can see here like i have one outer environment okay the green one and this is called a studio setup see when we in the real world when they are doing a model photography or a product photography they will be having a different studio setup so we are collecting the same 360 degree to get that kind of you know quality output for our character okay so let me show you on this image first so let's open okay now you can see uh, we are getting a different uh, bones on our geometry and when you render we will get the same actually and uh, we also switched on the transparent let me switch off the transparent so that i can see what is happening in the background so i'll go here uh, to the render setting film transparent i'm going to turn it off uh, let it be in ev for now so that we can explore fast otherwise you know cycle will take much amount of time so let it be in ev now you can see you know uh, this is what we got this environment image is bouncing on our character and we'll get the same kind of you know quality output okay if you want you can render now let's control alt zero and let's render and see how we are going to get the output we are getting the same output so if you want to see even uh, using shading so let's go back to the shading let's switch on to the camera view this is our camera view let's go for n and 
let's lock this camera let's position this character somewhere here okay and now you can see here this drop down it is using the preview of the hdr images which has given from the blender itself but we don't want this one we want this to be switched on you can see there are two things one is scene light okay means it is also using the light value that is called scene light to show you the preview okay i already told this is for the preview purpose but i want to see uh, not only with the default images which blender has given i want to see with the scene light okay so you can switch on the scene light so now i can see the impact but we know this image will not come so we'll switch on scene work okay so now we are uh, seeing the image which we have applied from the word environment okay see here okay now uh, you can also um, use this node editor like by going for if you select the geometry you will see geometry related material shader nodes if you change this to word then we can see word related nodes here okay so this is what we have added so i'll just show you again i'll remove so it's clear nothing so you can tell shift a and uh, you can search for environment so i'm just showing you another way environment texture just open and add this time we'll add the studio lighting set okay so let's add this and let's connect this to this color instead of black color so now we got studio light see so now we are inside the studio and we are getting the quality of the studio to bounce on our main character let's position this monkey somewhere here and still lots of things you can do like um, you can see there is a value called strength okay if you want to increase this you know uh, value of this bounce on this geometry you can even go to the word property or in the node base editor you can increase the strength okay you can increase and decrease the strength value so i'm getting more bones with the strength value now but i uh, when i'm rotating you can see i'm rotating the center view but i want to rotate the background image which we have placed for that purpose what you want to do see here in the shader node okay in the node base editor right side there is one option here also you can click n so that you can see everything okay so in this node tab there is a texture mapping okay so click on this texture mapping scroll down now we can position the texture according to requirement we can even rotate the texture see i'm rotating the texture okay so i can rotate the texture and position like which angle i want to render this what kind of bones i can apply on this let's uh, we can even scale for now i want to just move in z axis so that i can get some more bones okay and something like this so now we can see so without having a surrounding geometry i'm getting a reflection on my character this is very useful to uh, for product okay any product or logo when you are designing and even for the entire environment also to get the you know realistic kind of bones on our geometry okay use this environment light you can add jpeg image or you can even add hdri image to get more high definition you know uh, value from the image okay i'll just you know uh, close this and i will add one more image i'll show you it in fact this is some random images i took for some other purpose but you can see here uh, i can even add this and i'm getting you know that kind of quality here so likewise any image uh, you can add like you know uh, noon time or very sunny day cloudy day night time evening time and just add and you'll get uh, that kind of uh, you know bouncings on your geometry and additionally you can you can also switch on and play with the three point lighting and think like what kind of quality you want to get with the light material and render setting okay that's it for today 
थैंक यू